Hello everyone. Welcome back to my channel, Learn with Professor Janula. If you're new here, don't forget to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a new lesson. Today, we are going to learn about placenta examination. Before we move on to the placenta examination, let us first take a quick look at the overview of the placenta. The placenta is a temporary, disc-shaped organ that develops only during pregnancy. It connects the mother and the fetus, ensuring the exchange of nutrients, gases, and waste products. It begins to form at the site of implantation of the blastocyst around day six to seven after fertilization. And it becomes well established by the end of 12 weeks of pregnancy. So what exactly is the placenta? The placenta is a special organ that develops inside the uterus during pregnancy. It acts like a lifeline between the mother and the baby. Through this structure, oxygen and essential nutrients are supplied to the growing baby, while waste products and carbon dioxide are carried away from the baby's blood. In short, the placenta works as a support system that helps the baby survive and grow throughout pregnancy. Now, let us look at the structure of the placenta. On the maternal side, also called the basal plate, it is rough, reddish in color, and firmly attached to the uterine wall. On the fetal side, also called the chorionic plate, it is smooth and shiny, covered by the amnion. This side also shows the insertion of the umbilical cord. At full term, the placenta measures about 15 to 20 centimeters in diameter, 2 to 3 centimeters in thickness, and weighs around 500 to 600 grams. The umbilical cord is an important part of the placenta. It contains two arteries and one vein, all embedded in a protective substance called Wharton's jelly. Now why do we examine the placenta after delivery? Let's look at the main purposes. First, to ensure that the entire placenta and membranes have been delivered. Any retained piece can lead to serious complications, such as postpartum hemorrhage. Second, to make sure the placenta is of normal size and shape, which reflects healthy functioning during pregnancy. Third, examination helps to detect abnormalities that may give us clues about maternal or fetal conditions. Next, we assess the umbilical cord, its length, the point of insertion, and the number of blood vessels. Normally, there are two arteries and one vein. Finally, we also check the weight of the placenta, which usually ranges between 500 and 600 grams at term. Before starting a placenta examination, it's important to prepare all the required articles. We need sterile gloves for safe handling, and a sterile drape or tray to provide a clean surface. A kidney tray or bowl is kept ready to collect fluids. Scissors may be needed for cutting the umbilical cord, and a measuring tape or ruler is used to check the cord length and placental dimensions. A weighing scale is essential to record the placental weight. For your personal protection and to prevent contamination, the examiner should wear an apron or gown, mask, and gloves, Finally, we need documentation tools to accurately note the findings, including size, weight, cord insertion, membranes, completeness, and any abnormalities observed. Now let us learn the step-by-step -step procedure of placental examination. Before starting the placenta examination, it is important to make a proper assessment and prepare the setting. First, Explain the procedure to the parents and ask if they would like to observe the examination. Next, make sure that there is adequate lighting in the room. If the lighting is poor, shift to a well-lit area. Prepare a flat surface with a protective cover to prevent any blood spillage. If cord blood samples are required, keep a syringe and needle ready. And finally, check that all the necessary articles and personal protective equipment are available and ready for use. Once assessment is complete, the next step is planning. First, assemble all required materials, such as gloves, apron, sterile swabs, 
tray, weighing scale, and a syringe if cord blood collection is needed. It is equally important to plan for safe waste disposal to maintain infection control and to ensure proper documentation after completing the procedure. In implementation step, first perform hand hygiene. Always start by washing your hands or using an alcohol-based hand rub. Make sure to cover all surfaces, front, back, between fingers, and under the nails. Rub your hands together for at least 20 seconds. Then rinse thoroughly with water and dry with a clean towel or disposable paper. Place the placenta on a flat surface with the fetal side facing up. This allows us to examine the side that was in contact with the baby. Observe key features. Note the size, shape, color, and smell of the placenta. A healthy placenta is usually round or oval, about 15 to 20 centimeters in diameter, and has a deep reddish color with a mild odor. Next, let's take a closer look at the fetal side of the placenta. This is the side that was attached to the baby via the umbilical cord. Observe carefully for succenturiate lobes. These are small extra lobes separate from the main placenta. Infarctions, pale or white areas indicating regions of tissue death due to inadequate blood supply. Fatty deposits, yellowish patches that may indicate maternal metabolic issues or aging of the placenta. Identifying these features is important because they can give clues about placental function and fetal health. Always document any findings carefully. Next, examine the umbilical cord for the following. First, measure the length. The average umbilical cord is about 50 centimeters long. Short cords, 40 centimeters, may restrict fetal movement. Very long cords, 70 centimeters, may predispose to knots or cord prolapse. Then insertion type. Normally, the cord inserts centrally into the placenta. Variations include marginal insertion at the edge or velamentous insertion into the fetal membranes, which may cause complications. Check for true knots. These are actual knots in the cord that can restrict blood flow. They are usually incidental, but may sometimes affect the baby if tight. Examine for thrombi. Blood clots inside the cord vessels may indicate circulatory issues in utero. A true knot occurs when the umbilical cord forms an actual knot during pregnancy, usually due to fetal movement in the womb. Most true knots are harmless, but if the knot tightens, it can restrict blood flow and oxygen to the fetus, potentially leading to complications. True knots may be suspected on ultrasound during pregnancy, but most are found after birth during cord examination. After birth, the knot should be documented and the neonate monitored for any signs of distress. After delivery, it's important to examine the cut end of the umbilical cord to assess the blood vessels. Normally, the umbilical cord contains three blood vessels, two arteries, which carry deoxygenated blood from the fetus to the placenta, and one vein, which carries oxygenated blood from the placenta to the fetus. Carefully count the vessels at the cut end. Abnormal numbers, such as a two-vessel cord, may indicate congenital or chromosomal abnormalities and should be documented. Now that we've examined the fetal side and umbilical cord, let's move on to inspecting the membranes and maternal side of the placenta. First, hold the placenta by the edges of the membranes. Check for completeness and ensure there is a single hole, which corresponds to the opening where the umbilical cord passed through. Missing fragments can lead to complications if retained in the uterus. Next, inspect the maternal surface, which was attached to the uterine wall. Observe the number of lobes. Usually, there is one main lobe, but occasionally, accessory lobes may be present. Note any abnormalities, such as infarctions, calcifications, or unusual color. Finally, check the weight of the placenta. A typical term placenta weighs around 500 to 600 grams. D 
deviations from normal weight can provide clues about fetal growth or maternal conditions. Document all findings, membranes, lobes, and placenta weight. That brings us to the end of today's session on placental examination. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. Thank you so much for watching. And don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe for more nursing and health-related content. See you in the next video.